G'day guys and girls, today we're talking about Fujifilm's kit lens, the 18 to 55. Is it worth a small price tag and how sharp is this lens? We're gonna find out today, so stick around and roll that intro. Yo, g'day guys and girls, it is so good to see your beautiful smiling faces. As I said, the 18 to 55 kit lens from Fujifilm. Is it worth a tiny, tiny price tag? And how good is this lens for a kit lens? But on this channel, I do plenty of tips, tricks, and reviews, saving you time and money in your landscape photography. But mainly, we love to get out in this epic, epic world and take some landscape photography. So if that interests you, drop below after this and subscribe for future content. But Third lens, third lens in the last five years, the 8 55. I've had a very love, hate, love, hate, love, love, love relationship with this lens. Because when I previously owned this lens, I didn't ruin it, I didn't lose it. I sold it because it didn't suit my needs. But in the last 12 to 18 months, I've really upped my videography game. And this could be one of the must needs in your travel filmmaking kit. It is an absolute beast. About two months ago, I don't know, full review about the 18 to 135 being the ultimate Fuji lens that you need. The more I use this, the closer and closer this gets to being the number one lens that I would chuck in my bag. And there's three reasons for that. Photo, video, and overall compactability and size and weight, everything along those lines. And that is what we're gonna dive into the, to today. So why is this almost better than 18 to 135? We've already got 18 at the low end, but we've got 2.8, so it's not a fixed aperture. 2.8 all the way to f4 at 55 mil. But the huge difference I've noticed with this is two, re two major things. Obviously, it's a smaller focal range, so 135 to 55. So what we're getting out of that is so much more sharpness at 55. Of course, we haven't got the end focal range from 55 to 135, and also autofocus. When I went to Kyrgyzstan last time, the autofocus anywhere from 90 mil on was terrible. It missed so much and I rely on autofocus with my filmmaking because it's run and gun so much. This is sharp and such good autofocus. Whether I'm vlogging to myself, whether I'm walking around filming, whether I'm doing slow-mo, this is beast like beast mode at autofocus. So those are two reasons why. And obviously the third one is a lot smaller and a lot cheaper, almost half the price of the a 135 So you can see, that's the first reason why I own this lens. It's tiny, it can fit in my pocket. I can be shooting with a 16 mil, just get this out, out of my pocket and shoot with this. It's sharp, which we're about to find out through photos, but it's soft through video, but that is what you want. You want to do all post-production video sharpening in post-production. So this to me is pretty much living on the end of my Fujifilm X-H1. But we're going to dive into a few more things after this because this lens does not stop there. We're going to get onto now how good this bad boy is at photography. Dokily, dokily guys, we are now testing out the photography side of things. So I said before, three things. One, we've already covered the size and compactability of this lens. It is perfect for my running gun style, travel and photography style. Videography, which we haven't covered yet, and the photography side, which we are about to cover right now. So what I'm gonna do now is a bit of a test. It's for me and then for you guys, because I'm really in a big dilemma for this focal range right now with Fujifilm. This is inexpensive, it's small, everything, yes, but obviously we wanna get the best quality image and videography skills that we can out of the lens. So 18 mil, which is 27 mil in full frame, 55, which is around 80 mil in full frame. I'm gonna go through and do three focal ranges at three apertures. So I'm gonna do 2.8, 
at 18 mil. I'm gonna to jump to about F9, which should be the sharpest in this lens. Then I'm gonna to jump to F22. Then 35 mil, the same apertures, but we're gonna have a little bit difference at the max aperture because it's 2.8 to F4. So I'm gonna go down now in the X-H1, capture all these images, then we're gonna jump back and review these images so we can see center sharpness, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, corner sharpness out of every single aperture and focal range because at the beginning and at the end out of a uh, non-fixed focal range, out of a zoom range, sorry, we're gonna get really bad diffraction in the corners of F22, softness, all this sort of stuff, and that is what we wanna find out, how good this lens handles from minimum to maximum in apertures and focal ranges. So I'm gonna zip it up now, capture these images so we can have a look at them. Radio, there's the images complete at different focal ranges and different apertures. So we've got a max aperture, F9 and F22. We've got 18 mil, 35 mil and 55 mil. I've left this foliage in the bottom left hand corner on purpose because it's quite bright. So we wanna check out the contrast, also sharpness because obviously at F4 at 55 mil, gonna be completely blurred out. F9, I wanna see how much information comes back. Then at F22, everything should be in focus, but I wanna see things like diffraction in the bottom left-hand corner, because obviously we're a long way away. Then I've come down to a place where there's trees on purpose because we've got all small branches at different focal ranges and at different apertures. We're gonna get different things and we wanna check out sharpness in camera, but also with a high contrast place, as I said, it's the bottom left, high contrast, shadows, and then top left. Once again, we've got harsh light coming in from my right hand side in the image. So we're gonna check sharpness, corner sharpness, and contrast and color rendition out of this lens because that will change completely out of different lenses. So I'm gonna jump back now and give you to an absolute idiot that I had to hire to review this stuff. He's an absolute weirdo, but here he is, and I'm sorry about him also. Thank you, awesome twin brother Matt. John here doing all the in laptop analysis. Matt has told me strict instructions, no chin wag, and jump straight in and do the analysis of this. That's what we're gonna do, 18 mil, 35 mil, and 55 mil. You can see here I stood up 2.8, F9, and F22 over the whole focal range. We're gonna do center, sharpness, contrast, everything that we need to analyze, and top left. Really, we should do top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, but that is your job for your lenses to test out what is sharpest and what you need to shoot at to capture the best and sharpest images. So you can see here, 2.8 at 18 mil. Actually very happy with that, it's very sharp. F9, I shoot all my landscape photography between F9 and F11, super, super sharp. F22 is absolutely horrible, which I did actually assume. We are maxing out the aperture. But really surprising here, 2.8 is actually really sharp in the top left-hand corner. It is probably comparison to the F9. If you look at the foliage down the bottom, obviously F9 is sharp because it's got greater depth of field. Then you compare it to F22. I mean, it's sharper than the F2.8, but my God, F22 is not good at this camera. So you can see F16 is as big as I would go on this aperture. Jumping over to 35 mil, I've actually made a mistake. It should be 3.5 aperture on the bottom left. But 3.5 and F9, I must admit, they are actually just as sharp as each other. I would be really happy to shoot between 5.6 to F11 at 35 mil because 35 mil we're shooting a zoom range. So 18 to 55 should be the weakest or softest part of the lens. 35 mil, bang smack in the middle. 23 to 35 should be its absolute sharpest. Once again, F22 is extremely soft. I'm also noticing in that that we're losing some contrast to F22, which is super interesting. 3.5, F9, very, very good in the color rendition. Top left, once again, should be 3.5. Super impressed with the 3.5 and F9. Super, super impressed. F22 does get a little bit better in the top left-hand corner, but still, 
nowhere near as sharp as F9, which is totally, totally expected, but we are getting greater depth of field. Here, I've completely stuffed up F22. Missed focus, super, super important, but I know by shooting this previously, F22 is not sharp at all at 55 mil. Once again, this should be F4 on the left-hand side. F4 and F9, F9 is definitely sharper, but and I'm getting similar color rendition. So it's still pretty impressed with that, jumping up to the top left. This is where it's so interesting. F4 is soft as butter. F9, much sharper, but still, I would say, probably just bare minimum to pass. And F22, I've obviously stuffed up completely. This is where it gets super interesting. F18, uh, 18 mil, sorry, at F9, 35 mil at F9, and 55 at F9. I said before, F9 and F11 is the sharpest of the lenses in Fujifilm that I have personally found. 18 mil, we're getting greater depth of field. So things in the foreground and to the background, they're obviously a long, long way away. 55 mil, we are compressing them together. So obviously, things that are further away, things that are close are gonna be softer because of the zoom. So 18 mil, the foliage down the bottom should should be sharper. But super interesting here, 18 mil, super, super impressed. 35 mil, massively impressed. Got the best color rendition and sharpness. But this is where it is super interesting. 55 mil is so soft, extremely soft. So it'd be really interesting. I've got the 18 to 55, 55 to 200. It'd be really interesting to see shooting both at 55 mil, what is sharpest? Because this is actually extremely soft. Jumping up to the top left, this is where things get really interesting. 18 mil, as I said, great depth of field, but it is really, really sharp. F9, I don't wanna look at the foliage on the left-hand side. I'm looking more on the top right in the center at the background of the trees. Very, very sharp. Also, this water pump down the bottom here, extremely sharp also. So 35 mil definitely wins for the sharpness and obviously color rendition, but F18 has definitely, definitely impressed me there. 55 mil, it's just a no-go. It's not even passable, to be honest with you. F9, 55 mil. I can't get much sharper on that lens and it is still pulling out extremely soft. So hopefully that 16 to 80 mil range will fix that because I've got an overlap from 55 to 80 on two lenses. So 60 mil, I can still shoot with the 16 to uh, 80 mil. And then past that, I can jump to the 55 to 200 because I know it is extremely sharp, but this, is a very interesting comparison. So now it's on to you guys. Get your lenses, get your camera, jump out, take the same images on tripod and go through three, five, 10 focal ranges, different apertures and compare them. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, because you're gonna find out what the best conditions are to shoot for the best scene that you're trying to shoot. Very, very interesting. F9 for me, 35 mil is the prime, prime for this little bad boy. But now I'm jumping over to the coolest twin brother ever. Matt, take it away. So guys, there you have the photography review and please, please, please accept my twin brother. I know I've never told you about him and he's a bit of a weirdo, but he's good at reviews. He's good at what he does. I haven't got time to be out here and then go and do reviews. So please accept him. He's part of this channel now and he's part of my family. But where does this lens shine? We've went through the size and compactability, if that is even a word of this lens. It suits my travel and filmmaking skills down to a T. The photography side is everything you just seen, but I talked about the 18 to 135 being the ultimate lens for travelers in Fujifilm. It is good at photography, it is good at video, but it's not great at something. It's no good being good at something, but not great. This little bad boy is good at photography, but it is great. Like, no, 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 it is superb at videos. There, this setup, the Fujifilm X-H1 and the a 55 there is no goddamn setup that is better than this for Fujifilm. Hands down, I've tested a lot of them with the X-H1, but the stabilization out of these two lenses, the a 135 has great stabilization, but this is better. With the X-H1, it is so goddamn good. Also the size when you're filming. If I wanna film myself, it is so small so easy and so much lighter than everything else. Done a full review about the Fujifilm versus Sony. I know it's full frame compared to APS-C, but for me, I want lightweight and quality. I don't care if it's full frame, APS-C. This is so small and so 
goddamn good at stabilizing and video. It doesn't feel front heavy like it always wants to fall forward. Chuck it on a gimbal and it doesn't want to fall forward all the time. It is so small and so lightweight. But <laughs> like every lens, every camera, everything in this world it has a downfall. And what are those downfalls? There's a couple for me. The build quality. The build quality isn't perfect. And what I mean by that, it's not a red badge from Fujifilm. Obviously it is cheap, it's like 300 euros. But if I put a filter on the front of this and I sort of walk with it, this will slowly, slowly start to extend. And when I go to film myself, sometimes when you get close to my face, it becomes quite ugly. Sorry about that. But when you're filming like this, and you're talking and you can just see me here with the vlogs, it doesn't look so great. And as I said, run and gun is super important. So the barrel does fall down a little bit, but you know, it's 300 euros, we can get over that. Also the 2.8 to F4, there is a way you can get around this. Obviously for the pho photography side of things, it's perfect because 2.8, you can still do some star photography. It's not great for it, but it's just gonna get you by for star photography. And then if you want to do some low light filming, but I can get away with it by just chucking it to F4 and constant from 18 all the way to 55. But I am crying out for a little bit better quality out of photography. That's where I want the 16 to 80 mil to come out. It's the Canon range they come out with, the 16, uh, 24, sorry, to 105. But I know it's only two mils, but we're guys, every little bit counts. A little bit longer, better. A little bit shorter, not so good. But in this case, the shorter is better for me. The 16 mil, 18 is just a bit too close when I film to my face. It doesn't give me the surrounding area that I want to do. Also, when I'm just filming normally, I just wish it was a little bit wider. I know you can step back, but there's some situations where you just can't step back and you find yourself getting a little bit awkward position. And I chuck the 16 mil 1.4 on, and I never have a problem with that 24 mil focal range. So there's a few things for me. Being constant F4 wouldn't be a problem with a 16 to 80. Then it'd be a little bit bigger, obviously, still image stabilized, but I'm just crying out for that little bit better image quality out of the photography side of things. So next week I want to do a full review about the 16 to 55 2.8. I've recently purchased that because I wanted to upgrade the photography side of things, but I'll be really honest with you, this little weapon is so freaking good. So just to recap, the size and compactability, the image stabilizing out of this, the focal range is decent. As I said, the 16 mil would be better, but the video is where this shines. Like, I'm talking a glorious day on the Bahamas shining. It is that freaking good. Video, if you want video, this is the way to go. Photography is gonna pass you by, but the good thing is you can beat it up, you can smash it, you can ruin it. It's 300 euros to replace it, and it's a goddamn kit lens. People sell this because they just don't want it. So if you want it, jump on it. Get it used, it is so cheap. But guys, that is me done for today, reviewing this beautiful lens. If anything you wanna ask questions about, please email me, please contact me. I'm always interested to hear from you guys. Links for workshops for Slovenia and in Norway are in the description. Guys, I will see you next week reviewing the 16 to 55. And then we're gonna compare these two lenses and what price can get you. But guys, that is me done for today. Please subscribe for future content and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao. We're gonna find out today, so stick around and roll that intro. Is it worth the time? G'day guys and... <laughs>